Skandis Sanskrit or Khandis Pali means heaps, aggregates, collections, groupings. In Buddhism, it refers to the five aggregates concept that asserts five factors constitute and explain a sentient being's mental and physical existence. The five aggregates or heaps are form or matter or body, rupa, sensations or feelings received from form, vedana, perceptions, samshna, mental activity or formations, sankara, and consciousness, vijnana. The skandhas concept is in contradistinction to the idea of a unified being or individual and complements the anatta doctrine of Buddhism, which asserts that all things and beings are without self. The anatta and five aggregates. Doctrines are part of the liberating knowledge in Buddhism, wherein one realizes that the being is merely made up of a temporary grouping of five aggregates, each of which are not I, and not myself, and each of the skanda is empty, without substance. In the Theravada tradition, suffering arises when one identifies with or clings to the aggregates. This suffering is extinguished by relinquishing attachments to aggregates. The Mahayana tradition asserts that the nature of all aggregates is intrinsically empty of independent existence. Etymology and meaning Skanda is a Sanskrit word that means, "...multitude, quantity, aggregate." Generally in the context of body, trunk, stem, empirically observed gross object or anything of bulk verifiable with senses. The term appears in the Vedic literature. The Pali equivalent word khanda sometimes spelled K -kanda appears extensively in the Pali canon, where state Rhys Davids and William state, it means, "...bulk of the body, aggregate, heap, material collected into bulk." In one context, "...all that is comprised under, groupings." In some contexts, and particularly as the elements or substrata of sensory existence, sensorial aggregates which condition the appearance of life in any form. According to Thanissaro, the Buddha never defined a person in terms of the aggregates, poly, khanda, but such a notion is expressed by some modern scholars as if it were pan Buddhist. He adds that almost any Buddhist meditation teacher explains it that way, as even Buddhist commentaries from about 1st century CE onwards have done. In Thanissaro's view, this is incorrect, and he suggests that skanda should be viewed as functions or aspects of a sentient being. According to Dalai Lama, skanda means heap, group, collection, or aggregate. Adrian Snodgrass asserts that the term literally means heap. And the concept refers to the teaching accepted by all Buddhist schools that, the personality is an aggregate of five constituent parts. Paul Williams et al. translate skanda as, heap, aggregate, stating it refers to the explanation of the psychophysical makeup of any being. Damien Keown and Charles Prebish state skanda is feng po in Tibetan, and the terms mean, collections or aggregates or bundles. And in the context of canonical Buddhism the concept asserts that, "...the notion of a self is unnecessarily superimposed upon five skanda." Of a phenomenon or a living being, Johannes Bronckhorst renders skanda as, "...aggregates," stating that the meaning and importance of the concept is in explaining the non-self concept in Buddhism. The Buddhist texts assert the five aggregates are what there is to a person and personality, and in each skanda – body, sensations, perceptions, mental formations and consciousness, there is emptiness and no substance. <laughs> Description, the five skandhas The Buddha teaches in the Pali Canon the five aggregates as follows. Form. Or matter", skt, poly rupa rupa, tib, g zugs, matter, body or «material form» of a being or any existence. Buddhist texts state rupa of any person, sentient being and object to be composed of four basic elements or forces, earth solidity, water cohesion, fire heat and wind motion. «Sensation» or «feeling» skt, poly vedana vedana, tib, T shore ba, sensory experience of an object. It is either pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. Discrimination. Skt, sanjnya samnya, pali sanya sanya, tib. Dushis, sensory and mental process that registers, recognizes, and labels, for instance, the shape of a tree, color green, emotion of fear. Mental formations. 
SKT, Sanskara Samskara, Pali Sankara Sankara, Tib. Dubai. Constructing activities. Conditioned things. Volition. Karmic activities. All types of mental imprints and conditioning triggered by an object. Includes any process that makes a person initiate action or act. Consciousness. SKT, Vijnana Vijnana, Pali Vijnana Vijnana, Tib. Rnam Par Shis Pa. Discrimination or discernment, awareness of an object and discrimination of its components and aspects, and is of six types, states Peter Harvey. The Buddhist literature discusses this skanda as in the Nikayas, Agamas, Cognizance, that which discerns. In the Abhidhamma, a series of rapidly changing interconnected discrete acts of cognizance. In some Mahayana sources, the base that supports all experience, the initial part of the Buddhist practice is purification of each of the above five aggregates through meditation, study, ritual, and living by virtues, particularly abstaining from mental intoxicants. Ultimately, the practice shifts to considering these as naive, then transcending them to reach the state of realization that there is neither person nor self within, or in any other being, states Harvey, where everyone and everything is without self or substantiality and is a cluster of changing physical and mental processes. David Kalupahana clarifies that the individual is considered unreal but the skanda are considered real in some early Buddhist texts, but the skanda too are considered unreal and nonsubstantial in numerous other Buddhist Nikaya and Agama texts. <laughs> <laughs> Application Understanding Four Noble Truths Bhikkhu Bodhi 2000 B. P. 840 states that the aggregates are linked to dukkha suffering in the Buddha's Four Noble Truths teaching in the following way Understanding suffering, the five aggregates are the ultimate referent in the Buddha's elaboration on dukkha in his First Noble Truth. Since all four truths revolve around suffering, understanding the aggregates is essential for understanding the Four Noble Truths as a whole. Clinging causes future suffering, the five aggregates are the substrata for clinging and thus, contribute to the causal origination of future suffering. Release from samsara, clinging to the five aggregates must be removed in order to achieve release from samsara. Understanding dukkha In the Dhammakakapavatana Sutta the Buddha provides the classic elaboration on the first of his Four Noble Truths, the truth of suffering dukkha The fourth category of dukkha consisting of five bundles of grasping fuel, states Harvey, are the five aggregates that form a person. Each aggregate is an object of grasping clinging, at the root of self-identification as I, me, myself. All five are phenomenon that formulate a sense of personality, and they trigger suffering, pain or unsatisfactoriness. Everything that makes a person is a factor of dukkha, and these in Buddhist thought are not a source of pleasure but of sorrow. Nirvana requires transcendence from all five skandhas and the sense objects, each of the five skandhas trigger clinging asserts, Satipatthana Sutta, and the delusion of identifying, I, mine, myself through that skanda. This clinging creates karmic imprints that lead to rebirth and more dukkha. This ceases when this clinging ceases, no more karma is being produced, and rebirth ends. <laughs> Three marks of the skandhas The Buddhist scriptures assert that all five skandhas have three characteristics often called t lakhana, tri lakshana, three marks. These are dukkha, anicca impermanence, and anatta non-self. Each of the skandhas come into being and dissolve samsara. This is applicable to all beings and their environs, including human beings as well as beings who have reincarnated in deva, god, and naraka, hell realms. Further, states Buddhism, each of the skandhas, a person and every being lacks a self and substantiality. This is the non-self Anatta doctrine, and it holds that a belief in self is a source of dukkha suffering, pain, unsatisfactoriness. Realizing the real nature of skandhas, both in terms of impermanence and non-self, is necessary for nirvana. <laughs> <laughs> Topic. 
no essence. The Buddha taught that aggregates are appearances which don't have an essence either separately or together, all that is perceived as an aggregate or a whole has no real existence. The explicit denial of substantiality or essence in any of the five skanda appears in the early Buddhist texts. All form is comparable to foam, all feelings to bubbles, all sensations are mirage-like, dispositions are like the plantain trunk, consciousness is but an illusion, so did the Buddha illustrate the nature of the aggregates. The Skanda doctrine, state Mark Sideri et al., is a form of anti-realism about everyday reality including persons, and presents an alternative to "...substantialist views of the self". It is a Buddhist reductionism of everything perceived, each person and personality as an "...aggregate, heap", of composite entities without essence. This no essence view has been a source of sustained questions, major disagreements and commentaries since ancient times, by non-Buddhist Indian religions, as well as within Buddhist traditions. Arahants Another application of the Skanda theory in Buddhist texts is in descriptions of the enlightened, perfected state of Arhat and Tathagata. The perfect state of enlightenment is one without any personality, no I am conceit, no physical identification, no intellectual identification, no identification in direct or indirect terms related to any of the five skandhas, translates Peter Harvey, because a Tathagata has abandoned the personality factors. The physical, the personality factors, skandhas, and any sense of self or ira burden which the enlightened individual has dropped, thus becoming a man of nothing not clinging to anything internal or external. No one can find him because he has no I self or identity, while his sata expands to infinity, he is beyond the reach of the unenlightened human beings, as well as the army of the Mara demon of death in Buddhism. <laughs> <laughs> Understanding in Theravada Abhidhamma While early Buddhism reflects the teachings as found in the Pali Sutta Pitaka and the Chinese Agama, the early Buddhist schools developed detailed analyses and overviews of the teachings found in those sutras, called Abhidharma. Each school developed its own Abhidharma, the best known as the Theravada Abhidharma. The Sarvastivada Abhidharma has been preserved partly in the Chinese Agama. Six sense bases. The Theravada tradition teaches the six sense bases theory, understood as six pairs of internal and external sense bases that accommodate all the factors of existence. It is the all and apart from which nothing at all exists, states Bhikkhu Bodhi. These six sense bases in the Theravada exegesis are an alternative to the five skandhas, but they are corollaries of the skanda doctrine and not an innovation. In this teaching, found in texts such as Salayatana Samyutta, the coming together of an object and a sense organ results in the arising of the corresponding consciousness. The suttas themselves don't describe this alternative. It is in the Abhidhamma, striving to a single all-inclusive system, that the five aggregates and the six sense bases are explicitly connected. The Maha Punama Sutta, also called the Great Full Moon Night Discourse, describes the impermanence of the aggregates to assert that there is no self, and the right discernment is, This is not mine, this is not myself, this is not what I am. This theme is retained in the Theravadan Six Sense Bases exegesis, states Bhikkhu Bodhi, which sum up the conditioned existence as, The All of the sense bases, and that the Six bases are empty of a self and of what belongs to the self. Topic: <inaudible> 12 sense bases. An alternate formulation of the aggregates is in the terms of 12 sense bases. The first 5 external sense bases, visible form, sound, smell, taste and touch are part of the form aggregate. The mental sense object i.e. mental objects overlap the first four aggregates form feeling perception and formation The first five internal sense bases eye ear nose tongue and body are also part of the form aggregate The mental sense organ mind is comparable to the aggregate of consciousness Bodhi states the six sense bases as a vertical view of human experiences while the aggregates as a horizontal temporal view 
The Theravada Buddhist meditation practice on sense bases is aimed at both removing distorted cognitions such as those influenced by cravings, conceits and opinions, as well as "...uprooting all conceivings in all its guises". Eighteen Dottis The eighteen dhatas, six external bases, six internal bases, and six consciousnesses, function through the five aggregates. These dhatas can be arranged into six triads, each triad composed of a sense object, a sense organ, and sense consciousness. In regards to the aggregates, the first five sense organs eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, are derivates of form. The sixth sense organ mind is part of consciousness. The first five sense objects visible forms, sound, smell, taste, touch are also derivatives of form. The sixth sense object, mental object includes form, feeling, perception and mental formations. The six sense consciousnesses are the basis for consciousness. Four paramatthas The Abhidhamma and post-canonical Pali texts create a meta-scheme for the Sutta Pitaka's conceptions of aggregates, sense bases and dhatas elements. This meta-scheme is known as the Four Paramatthas or Ultimate Realities. <laughs> <laughs> ultimate Realities There are four Paramatthas, three conditioned, one unconditioned Material phenomena rupa, form, Mind or consciousness, sata. mental factors, setasikas, the nama factors, sensation, perception, and formation, nibbana. Topic: <laughs> Mapping of the paramatthas. The mapping between the aggregates, the twelve sense bases, and the ultimate realities is represented in this chart. Topic. Twelve Nidanas The Twelve Nidanas describe twelve phenomenal links by which suffering is perpetuated between and within lives. <inaudible> Inclusion of the five aggregates Embedded within this model, four of the five aggregates are explicitly mentioned in the following sequence Mental formations sankara samskara condition consciousness vijnana vijnana which conditions name and form nama rupa which conditions the precursors salayatana fasa sparsa to sensations vedana which in turn condition craving tanatursna and clinging upadana which ultimately lead to the entire mass of suffering Kevalasa Dukkakanda, the interplay between the five aggregate model of immediate causation and the twelve nidana model of requisite conditioning is evident, for instance underlining the seminal role that mental formations have in both the origination and cessation of suffering. Three lives According to Hans Wolfgang Schumann, the Nidanas are a later synthesis of Buddhist teachings meant to make them more comprehensible. Comparison with the five skandhas shows that the chain contains logical inconsistencies, which can be explained when the chain is considered to be a later elaboration. This way it is explainable that nama rupa in consciousness in the ninefold are the beginning or start, while in the twelvefold chain they are preceded by ignorance and formations. Those can only exist when nama rupa in consciousness are present. Schumann also proposes that the twelvefold is extended over three existences, and illustrates the succession of rebirths. While Buddhahosa in Vasubandhu maintains a 2 8 2 schema, Schumann maintains a 3 6 3 scheme, putting the five skandhas alongside the twelve nidanas. <laughs> <laughs> Understanding in the Mahayana tradition The Mahayana developed out of the traditional schools, introducing new texts and putting other emphases in the teachings, especially sunyata and the bodhisattva ideal. India Prajnaparamita 
The Prajnaparamita teachings developed from the 1st century BCE onward. It emphasizes the emptiness of everything that exists. This means that there are no eternally existing essences, since everything is dependently originated. The skandhas too are dependently originated, and lack any substantial existence. This is famously stated in the Heart Sutra. The Sanskrit version of the classic, Prajnaparamita Ridaya Sutra, Heart Sutra, states, the noble Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva, while practicing the deep practice of Prajnaparamita, looked upon the five skandhas, seeing they were empty of self-existence, said, Here Shariputra, form is emptiness, emptiness is form, emptiness is not separate from form, form is not separate from emptiness, whatever is form is emptiness, Whatever is emptiness is form, the same is true with feelings, perceptions, mental formations and consciousness. Madhyamaka The Madhyaka school elaborates on the notion of the middle way. Its basic text is the Mulamadhyamakakarika, written by Nagarjuna, who refuted the Sarvastivada conception of reality, which reifies dhammas. The simultaneous non-reification of the self and reification of the skandhas has been viewed by some Buddhist thinkers as highly problematic. <inaudible> Yogacara The Yogacara school further analyzed the workings of the mind, elaborated on the concept of nama rupa and the five skandhas, and developed the notion of the eight consciousnesses. China Sunyata, in Chinese texts, is wu, nothingness. In these texts, the relation between absolute and relative was a central topic in understanding the Buddhist teachings. The aggregates convey the relative or conventional experience of the world by an individual, although absolute truth is realized through them. Commenting on the Heart Sutra, D. T. Suzuki notes, when the sutra says that the five skandhas have the character of emptiness, the sense is, no limiting qualities are to be attributed to the Absolute, while it is immanent in all concrete and particular objects, it is not in itself definable. Tathagatagarbha <tathagata> The Tathagatagarbha sutras, which developed in India, played a prominent role in China. The Tathagatagarbha Sutras, on occasion, speak of the ineffable skandhas of the Buddha beyond the nature of worldly skandhas and beyond worldly understanding. In the Mahayana Mahaparinirvana Sutra the Buddha tells of how the Buddha's skandhas are in fact eternal and unchanging. The Buddha's skandhas are said to be incomprehensible to unawakened vision. Tibet <inaudible> <inaudible> The Vajrayana tradition further develops the aggregates in terms of Mahamudra epistemology and tantric reifications. Insubstantiality Referring to Mahamudra teachings, Chogyam Trungpa identifies the form aggregate as the «solidification» of ignorance Pali, avia, skt, avidya, allowing one to have the illusion of «possessing» ever dynamic and spacious wisdom Pali, via, skt, vidya, and thus being the basis for the creation of a dualistic relationship between «self» and «other». According to Trungpa Rinpoche, the five skandhas are «a set of Buddhist concepts which describe experience as a five-step process» and that «the whole development of the five skandhas less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 as an attempt on our part to shield ourselves from the truth of our insubstantiality while the practice of meditation is to see the transparency of this shield topic <laughs> deity yoga trunka rinpoche writes 2001 p 38 Some of the details of tantric iconography are developed from Abhidharma that is, in this context, detailed analysis of the aggregates. 
Different colors and feelings of this particular consciousness, that particular emotion, are manifested in a particular deity wearing such and such a costume, of certain particular colors, holding certain particular scepters in his hand. Those details are very closely connected with the individualities of particular psychological processes. <laughs> Relation to other Indian religions The use of the skandhas concept to explain the self is unique to Buddhism among major Indian religions. It contrasts with the premise of Hinduism and Jainism that a living being has an eternal soul or metaphysical self. Miri Albahari objects to the usual understanding of the skandhas as denoting the absence of any self. Albahari has argued that the khandas do not necessarily constitute the entirety of the human experience, and that the Hindu concept of Atman eternal soul is not explicitly negated by Pali canon. According to Albani, "...anatta is best understood as a practical strategy rather than as a metaphysical doctrine." To Albahari, nibbana is an ever-present part of human nature, which is gradually "...uncovered," by the cessation of ignorance. See also <laughs> <laughs> Notes <laughs>